we are going. What is going on with everybody, man? It is your boy, Eric, a.k.a. Young God, coming to you live in the Green Dungeon, giving it to you real, raw, rugged. And when I do these interviews, I usually let people introduce themselves. Um, it's been a few times where I had to introduce the person because I felt like it was special. But uh, I feel like I got to give you something super duper special, man. Um, I'm on the phone with somebody right now. This is, uh, this is a brother right now who I think is probably could be one of the most powerful brothers in human history when it all said and done. Um, somebody who is multi-talented, you know what I'm saying? A very genuine guy. I mean, when I do these interviews, usually people be like, all right, now let's do the interview. He done sat and talked to me about 20, 30 minutes before the interview started, you know what I'm saying? So very genuine guy. And um, I don't know if you want to be called Sage or Navy Blue today, but we got, we got both of them on the phone right now, man. So I just want to thank you and introduce you, man. How you doing today, man? I'm good, bro. Grateful to be alive. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful day today, man. It's a beautiful day outside, man. Um, it's a lot of people watching this right now. And I know they're like, nigga, Eric, how did you get this? What is going on right now? So instead of me telling the story, I would love for you to tell how this even happened. Uh, how did you find me? And uh, just give a little background before we even get to this interview. Got you. Bro, just so you know, I don't know if I'm connected to Wi Fi. I think I am. But you're glitching so crazy. I'm glitching crazy? <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, you're like, your words are like. Duh, 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 duh. Was no, I glitching yeah, I before the interview? Uh, nah. That's crazy. Uh, um, you're good. Yeah, I got some. Can you understand me? Yeah. Let's, 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 let's let it rock, though. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so. My mother sent me the link to your video and I was I think I might have I checked it but I think I just like it was a whole it was the commitment you know at the time so I was like ah you know, I'm gonna say no. and she kept telling me she's like you gotta watch that shit it is so funny I was like yeah I got you I got you I got you <laughs> And I was already skeptical because my mom was on some like she just lo she loves to to be proud of her kids so like mm. you know what I mean so like every parent should but yeah so she told my my girlfriend and then she peeped it and then was like bro you have to watch this shit and then watched it at the crib yeah yeah with my with my childhood friend like. And that shit was so funny. You had us cracking up, man. But, bro, this is the... All of that shit aside, my real question is, bro, where is the top for your toilet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that is funny. <laughs> oh, man. That is funny. Oh my gosh. That's funny. Uh. <laughs> so the backstory on that is, I think you may, it, I was thinking the other day, I was like, how do niggas not see it's not a top on this bitch, bro? Like, this shit is gone, bro. I done dropped the top on this bitch, ain't nobody said nothing. <laughs> so that's, you the first person to ask me that question. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> Uh, let me see. So, make a long story short. Uh, I don't know how, but it cracked. Like, it cracked out of nowhere like a couple months ago. And I was like, I can't do nothing with this. I might as well just take it off. So, yeah, it cracked. And I just got to get a new toilet at this point. But, yeah, it's <laughs> that's funny. It's, it's out of here, man. It Yo, we was dying. I was like, maybe maybe you had that situation where, like, yo, the flusher. What? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how I cracked it, but yeah, somehow I like messed around and cracked the whole thing. That's funny that you noticed that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you told me your side on how you knew me. So I guess I want to tell you how I even uh, got familiar to who you are. So uh, like I said before we did this interview, I was always an Odd Future fan. And um, you would hear the name Sage get mentioned, so I was aware of who you were. But I wasn't like a skateboard uh, uh, right. when I was raised or whatever. So I was never really tapped into that. So my first real, like, I guess, vision of who you actually were was on the Mint. 
So I'm looking at the cover art and I see Earl and I see this light skin nigga. And um, I see navy blue. And I'm like, I look at the picture, I'm like, nigga, is that Colin Kaepernick? I'm like, what the fuck? This nigga Earl got a song with Colin Kaepernick? Like, this is gonna be crazy. This nigga gonna be taking a knee on the song. So I listen to the song and I'm like, yo, I don't know who navy blue is, but this is kind of interesting. So fast forward, I start hearing you on all these projects. I hear you on uh, Mike Project, War My Pen. Then I hear you on Strangers with Madani. And I'm like, yo, I don't know why they let this nigga on the song because he's going crazy. I'm like, this nigga is like rapping his ass off. Like, if I would have heard the verse, I'd be like, hey, man, you have to rap a little, a little light, man, because you you going crazy on these songs. So I'm like, bro, this, who is this guy? So I'm asking people, like, who is Navy Blue? They're telling me. I'm like, interesting. Then we get to the album. I review the album. And, man, you, um... You got, I think my, and so far, you, you got Rap Album of the Year, bro. This is Rap Album of the Year, and um, it's insane, bro. You, not only do you rap, you skateboard, you, you paint, you uh, you model, uh, you you got damn the Jamie Foxx of light skin niggas, and it's, uh, <laughs> hey, it's and it's a great crazy. interview, bro. I'm just flying out right now. <laughs> hey, fun fact, bro. Fun fact about Jamie Foxx. Actually, you can't really see because I got another scar. I am very light-skinned and pale right now. Okay. But I got a scar in my shit right there. Yeah, I see it. The smaller one is from Jamie Foxx's pool. How? You slipped and fell or something? No, I was swimming in, in Jamie Foxx's pool. I don't, I don't I don't even know what to ask after that. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what to ask after that. How I need that story. Nah, Why were you with Jamie Foxx Pool? I need that story, though. My my best friend uh, growing up, his name was CJ, um, and he he actually played Little Ray. Like he plays Ray Charles in the Ray movie. Oh, okay. When he flashes back to his childhood, that that's my that's one of my greatest friends, uh, CJ, and. Uh, His godfather is Jamie Foxx. Mm. And, like, they lived close, and, like, like, sometimes we'd just be like, you want to go swim? And I was like, yeah. And then we went to his house. I was like, oh, shit. And his pool had, like, stucco walls or something. I don't know how, why a pool would have stucco. Like, it was rough, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, back in the day when pools had that, like, rough, I can't explain it. But, yeah, I just scraped my hand in there, and I was like, so that's fun fact about Jamie Foxx. Shout out to Jamie Foxx, man. Um, yeah, I mean, shit, if they got a Ray Part 2, I'm going to need you in a bit. You know what I'm saying, man? If they got a, uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Can you act? No, it's funny. Is I've, I've been, like, trying to uh, just be more open-minded. I'm super, I'm, I'm willing, you know, if somebody gave me the, the right role, you know what I mean? I'm down. Well, just to kind of, I guess, take it back a little bit. Um, there's so much stuff I want to talk about, but I, I want to specifically start with music and um, just why I think your music is special. And I just want your thoughts on this. Um, as we were kind of talking about, I feel like your music is very vulnerable. I don't know if you remember this, but Drake had DM'd Kodak Black and was like, hey, man, how can I be this uh, vulnerable and open with my music? Like, I'm listening to your album and it's just crazy. I feel like I can see like a... Uh, uh, like a vision of your mind and that's how I feel when I'm listening to your music so I got that question for you like when you're writing or when you're doing however you come up with music how are you able to be this vulnerable because I feel like people are vulnerable in their music but the way that you're writing it's almost like you're bearing your soul on the track and I'm just curious of like how do you obtain that because I feel like that's a special feat that not a lot of people can right um, thank you Man, I think it's just uh, my ability to, like, I'll use this as the as the better example, because I could have just gone on forever. It's like my mom was, was telling me how, you know, we always, as humans, we have this kind of obsession with, with the idea of, like, excavation, like, going within yourself or going directly into a mountain going into the earth to find oil whatever the fuck um, so we 
kind of like eliminated this idea of excavation and she said we're just we're only transmutating so being that like we can only multiply like what we have you know and i feel like when i'm writing or i have to just naturally respect what is coming out you know what i mean because like like we said earlier like there's not many people that really like use this as therapy you know i know everybody uses music as therapy because it's, it's one of the greatest forms of therapy there is um, but man it's just one of them things i'm like the newest shit lately is i don't i don't erase any bars mm. that's the one thing especially with that project with Araidin, is like i a lot of the bars I didn't erase, like they were just, that started at a time when I was starting to just re record what I wrote, you know what I mean? Or I sometimes would look at the page and I didn't like seeing like lines crossed out because it made me feel like I was going against my spirit, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I actually like that. There's a lot of songs that I have some, some of them that I, that I feel like I would change certain bars or so, whatever. But I just have to let them be for what they are, you know what I mean? And it's crazy because, I could be wrong, but I have a theory on um, another reason why I think that you're so kind of just uh, vulnerable and uh, why it comes across in your music. This could be like subconscious or a conscious thing that you do, but I think you, pr you approach rap from like a spoken word type of uh, flow. Like it's very like spoken wordish. And when I listen to spoken word and poetry, you really get moved by like a, a very you know, in depth and, you know, I was doing, you know, you really get moved by that. And the way that I feel like you approach rap is that way. I don't know if that's on purpose or if that's just the way that your style is developed, but I think that's a, a real reason why people connect to you. Absolutely. Man. I mean, I've always been, uh, always loved like writing, you know, and uh, I haven't been reading that much this past year and a half. I should be reading a lot more, but um, my grandpa had me had me reading a lot when I was when I was a kid, you know. And I think that's where my love for like language and poetry first kind of came about. Especially just my upbringing, man. I'm really I'm really grateful, and I I think that at a really young age, when I dealt with uh, the death of my brother, um, I just something happened within me where I just knew that I was um, a spiritual person. Mm. You know, I wasn't, like, limited by by just my body, you know? And I started to realize that I really chose my parents, you know, you know what I mean? I started to realize, like, damn, I am fully just a spirit, or, like, you know, I'm just an alien nigga yeah. <laughs> who pulled up and was like, I want to come through that man and that woman. Mm. And my parents are so amazing, for real. You know, that's that's what I have to acknowledge, is that not a lot of people have the parents that, that I do or that all of us do, you know what I mean? They're all one of a kind because we chose them and they serve what they're meant to serve in our lives, you know what I mean? Because I feel like whatever we don't handle in the current life or you're just kind of, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cycle, you know? I say this sarcastically a lot in uh, that interview, I mean, the review that I did for your album, um, but I really do think, because you bring it up a lot, you bring up spirits and spirituality a lot in your music, I think, I don't know if you tapped in with some spirits that's not here anymore, man, but in your music, it really sounds like you tapped in with the ancestors, bro, like, if, if the ancestors was making rap music, bro, you know, if Harriet Tubman was got them on an alchemist beat, bro, it'd be you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just... <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's a crazy compliment. But I'm just saying, like, it really feels like you tapped in with some 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 of our older ancestors. And I, I don't know. Like, I'm just curious your thoughts on that because it's it's powerful, bro. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, it's evident. And I'm glad that it that that comes through you know what I mean um yeah I'm definitely tapped in with my ancestors and and um I f definitely feel a, a, a presence of 
protection and blessings like just in my life spiritually just every day and uh like i said i I think early on it was just like my my not my obsession but uh my love for like trying to understand death you Mm. know what i mean what that, that meant and just moving forward I, I've just I've just noticed how much I've how much that has allowed me to grow you know what I mean to really see things differently you know what I mean to be more open minded to be less judgmental to like you know and, and it's crazy because like speaking of those like ancestral uh, spirits I, I say this a lot the, the movement of like slums and people affiliated with slums like you Mike Mavi Madani and everybody, um, I'm, I'm really interested in black history, right? And I like to study black movements. And uh, one of my favorite black movements in black history, or just history in general, is the Black Panther movement. I feel like that's like one of like the most strongest times in like black unity. And I, I, I don't like compare, use this comparison lightly or whatever, but I feel like this group of collective and music, I feel like you guys could do something and be like a black movement in history. You know what I'm saying? Like the way that you guys are using your music because I feel like you guys are trying to do stuff beyond music, like to actually help the community. And I, I feel like that can actually be a really strong movement. I don't know if that is something that you ever thought about, but that's something that, I, that's how I view you guys for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think that we are we are so important, especially on the topic of vulnerability. So mm-hmm. in, in our community, I mean, you know how it is. To, you're black, so you know the way that we process our emotions is is much differently because we're already dealing with like an inexplicable trauma you know what I mean and um, I'm just super proud of what we're doing it's like if I was an older conscious black person I'd be like yo they are doing I like them you know and uh, the beauty of, of, you know, what I, my faith in, uh, is that they don't, they don't necessarily, like, uh, make Odisha's, like, icons, like, they make, they, they make them relatable, you know, you fully see yourself in them, you mm. know what I mean, and they have flaws, and they embrace them, and, you know, it's just a beautiful thing, there's a lot of, a lot of stories that are just, relate the human experience and you're just like see it's not about you know like doing so much good like you gotta fall on your ass to learn you know and I feel like especially uh, you know you listen to Kia's new album uh who Kia nah oh yeah you gotta tap in yeah, that's, gotta that's tap in. in my opinion the what I've been listening to the most yeah, lately, okay. you know? uh, kind of the album that I've been running back a lot um, yeah, K E I Y A A. The last A is a uh, capital. That's what I'm, uh, I'm writing that down right now for sure. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, she's kind of doing the same thing. It's like a lot of music that's with the theme is really mental health. Mm. Uh, I mean, because a lot of black white people don't have the words to put put their like. I like that our music is the soundtrack experiences you know what i mean and uh this kids have hit me up like man i was gonna kill myself and i listened to you know whatever song and and i just love that everybody got their different joint that they love you know what I mean? like for me my my car my car joint that's like that one for me is 30 keys always because mm. that one is just like oh man And I actually had a friend of mine ask me the other day, like, if I was, if I only liked emotional music. And I was, like, thinking to myself, like, oh, nah, like, you know. But it's true. All music is very emotional, you know what I mean? Like, and I can use skateboarding as a perfect example for that. Like, a lot of my friends, you know, I have a lot of black and white friends, whatever. A lot of many, every race, nationality, you know, whatever. Skateboarding is very multicultural and diverse in that sense. 
for the most part, it is pre- predominantly white. But what I'm saying is, like, for a kid coming out of the hood, skateboarding is saving his life. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus, like, it being just a hobby for a rich kid coming out of Beverly Hills or whatever. You know what I mean? And, um... Uh, I'm just glad that people can now acknowledge that just like that we are that we're doing something important. You know what I mean? That this is like important work that has to be done. And uh, I'm super proud of like of what we're doing. You know, I'm just like looking looking back now. I'm like, wow, that was five years ago or four years ago, and just how we've all come like as far as just. Just so many different life experiences, you know, and the, the overarching theme of our music is just, like I said, mental health and just that you can fully insert yourself, you know what I mean? And something that I'm particularly proud of that I do with my with my raps and my production is that I very much so feel like a painter in the in the sense that you can go to to where I am you know what I mean you can fully go to that place and feel it and see it and smell it you know what I mean no that's a fact and, and like I said you because you were talking about people hitting you up like you they were like kill themselves and they heard your music like y'all yeah. really saving people like like a song like um never thought I'd be never thought I'd be the one to cry like this like that that may be a perfect song, bro. Like I can't find a flaw in that song, bro. And then when you flip the every nigga, like that song is top tier, bro. And the way that you're just so vulnerable and just talking about, you know, uh, never think you would be the one to cry like this because, bro, I know a lot of hood niggas, bro. Like niggas don't want to cry. Like niggas see their homeboy. Niggas see their homeboy. Bro, I was in tenth grade. Nigga got killed at a, a, a prom after party, bro. Where well, you supposed to be having fun at? And niggas, niggas, niggas just got shot, and bro died in his brother's hands. And I mean, niggas don't know how to cope with that because the next day you still got to be the man of the house. You know what I'm saying? Your mama not, your mom might not be home. You might not know your daddy or whatever. And niggas just don't know how to, how to really go through them emotions. So just to listen to that song saying that you don't, you never thought you'd be the one to cry like that, is 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 crazy to hear because I know it's a lot of other black brothers that hear that and and feel like you know. I never thought I'd be the one crying because I'm supposed to be this strong, manly man. So I just want to salute you for making a song like that because I feel like you you showing niggas like it's okay to cry. It's okay to, you know what I'm saying, show your emotions, bro. So I thought that was fire you did that. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm eternally grateful. Um, but yeah, the crazy shit is like thinking about someone like my grandfather. He, uh, he suffered from a uh, cancer, you know. He it was prostate cancer, which then spread to uh, the, the liver and the bone, which mm. is pretty fucked up. And uh, he also had an aneurysm years before. And um, I always felt like aneurysms. You know what an aneurysm? Is? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like very is like a physical manifestation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it makes sense. Like, and I'm just with this whole coronavirus shit happening. Like, they're saying how like you gotta get your gut healthy. You know what I mean? You know, if you was a gut instinct, yeah. or, you know, there's a lot of nerves there. I feel like, and when you internalize so much shit and hold on to it, it really it explodes, you know what I mean? And it does something to you physically. And uh, I, I saw that in my... I quickly want to say this, because you said that on Death Mask. Um, what you said, you said that the death of your father was eating away the lining of your stomach or something like that. So, I mean, that's even to talk about, like, that actually doing something physically to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's not just emotionally and, and mentally. So you actually spoke on that. But, yeah, my fault. Yeah, it's all good. Um... Yeah, it's just a, it's a, <laughs> my girlfriend over here. Trying... <laughs> you got a dog in the crib? Yeah. That's my baby. 
Oh, sorry, distractions. No, you good, um, you good, you good. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just super, like, uh, I keep saying super. But yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess there's super today, man. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully this is going, like, all right, I'm just like. Bro, niggas, niggas love the natural stuff, bro, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. For sure. Um, I'm about to roll up the, the rest of this run. Bet, 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 bet. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. You know what, though? Like I, like I was saying, I'm just, I think it's really important that w- what we're doing, moving forward, people are going to be like, yeah. I mean, moving forward into the future, look back, like, that was that was really beautiful what they were doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I like that we don't need to necessarily need to be another, like, group, you know what I mean? Like, everybody just knows it's all like-minded. We all are actual friends, you know? spend a lot of time with each other like not making music and um, I think that's really important too you know mm-hmm. that like friendship we really uh, and just over the years we're just really growing together like being able to open up with each other and share you know what's going on with us not not just through our, our ribs you know and it's been beautiful to see like everybody's growth because for some some of us and this, that's the only place that we can truly express ourselves, you know. Hey man, I want to dive deep into your growth because it's time for us to talk about this album, bro. It's so much oh, yeah. crazy stuff <laughs> on this album. Before we do that though, I have to ask you. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's a snippet of yours played at the Earl show that's on YouTube, and uh, I really need that. I don't know if that's ever coming out. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Or do I got Oh yeah, that's things? that's me and me and Pink Seafood. Goodness gracious. This is the one where you talking that about shit, uh, that shit is called Tears Ponder Boy Fierce. Oh my god, nigga <laughs> this nigga in this bougie Bonton bag, man. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> I'ma need that, man. Is that ever supposed to come out? Um, yeah, I mean for sure. That beat is hot. That's a garage that's not garage band, I think. Uh, we made that beat somehow, so we in, in the in, maybe in the logic file or something. Um, yeah, that's a hot one. Yeah, niggas need that, man. Um, I'm so mad. What do they call it on YouTube? I hate the name of the. It, it was like a, <laughs> it, was, it says unreleased, and then it says in parentheses, "Not Earl." <laughs> we need the name. <laughs> that's the name of it. We talking about, that, That's the same one, right? Yeah, bro. They they got the funniest name. <laughs> So yeah, uh, not even named after you in the title, but yeah, niggas need that. Um, but yeah, man, I gotta talk about this album, man. There's so many parts of this album where you're rapping is like, how are you doing this? And it's crazy. It's like little pockets that you get into. Like, uh, what is it? Love Is? I think that is like my favorite, just like my favorite exhibition of your rapping on the album. Just like your flow and like your, your, your technical skills as a rapper. That's my favorite on that album right there. Um, you're going crazy on that, bro. Just the my favorite part is where you did the uh the the, the shout out Nack and Sid and uh and, and Sid brother Tebe Ken to us. Just the way you flung right there, it sounds so natural. It's almost like spoken word. So I just I don't know if there's any backstory on that song, but that song it just it sounds very um I don't know. It's your rapping is amazing. Like that. But yeah, if you got any stories or backstory on that song specifically, uh yeah, please let me know. Yeah. Uh... Yo, I really love that song too, cause that's I flipped my favorite Gil Scott song. Mm. And um, yeah, that beat was initially called just Brian's flute, <laughs> and I just I went through so many. Yeah, that one was really, really beautiful, beautiful moment. Especially the the timing of that one, just in my life when I wrote that. It was like, uh, yeah, just triumphant all all the way through. Is it, even though you know, for some people it might be slightly like you know not boring, but you know, yeah, it feels very triumphant. Like a lot of those moments were simultaneously like happening. You know, mm. it was just I was over the past year and a half, as you know, really that's majority of that was recorded a year you know and then and then i transitioned so, to that's crazy and then transition to give praise and like 
he just barring up the whole song with the uh, I'm not I'm not Russ or KD OKC. Yeah, like a thunder bar before that. Like that's a crazy song. And uh, my favorite part of that song is the um, uh, if I was a milit what do you said if I had a military mind I'd be a panther. One paragraph stanzas. I'm next up. Like the way you float that and the way you intertwine that. That's that was crazy the way you straight that away to, to you straight that together uh, together. So uh, I'm curious, if just like if there's any story behind that, because that tr- that song make a nigga want to go to church for sure. Yeah, man. Um, that bar is actually my grandfather's, um, and on my on my SoundCloud, I I sample it a lot actually. There's a, a few songs that I've used. That was an interview with my grandpa, and uh, yeah, that shit is it's 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 beautiful. It's about uh, Papa being a, a conscientious objector. Mm. Uh, you know, during a time, this is before Muhammad Ali, you know, this was a war before then, you know, mm. and uh, things were really strange, man, like, imagine that, saying no to war, and like, that was being black and saying no to war, man, come on, my grandpa was like, why would I go fight, why would I, why would I do that? You know what I mean? When when I'm facing the worst shit here. Yeah. Why would I go fight for the for the for, for the oppressor? You know. And um, in the interview, he says, "If I was of the military mind, I would have been uh, one of those Black Panthers <laughs> fighting for the rights of the minority mm. right here where we live." <laughs> <laughs> That's fire. Yeah, but man, so that's, and that's the same, I feel the same way, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a violent person, um, I love Dr. King, you know, I love Malcolm, you know, I, as I, as I get older and as the conditions of, like, all this shit is just getting so crazy, like, I've definitely grown to have a more militant perspective over, like, you know, and that's even, if we're, like, breaking it down it's like yeah practice non-violence that's a bold decision you know what I mean it, it's really it's it becomes really the line gets blurred you know what I mean especially when it's like you're not gonna disrespect women in front of me you know you know what I mean yeah. there's just certain certain ones where it's like You gotta assert yourself, you know what I mean? Sure, and physically. Sure. And, uh, yeah. It's, a, uh, It's one of those things, man. Niggas be so caught up in, like... <clears throat> in trying to maintain that... Human image, you know what I mean? Like, what we... What we view masculine... What they say toxic masculinity is... Is really... Masculinity is a vulnerable male that can protect family you know what I mean that's what I that's what I think and when I think of my papa that's the perfect example you know what I mean and uh that's kind of why I I acknowledge him because I really don't think there's many people like my like my grandfather you know what I mean in in just in this life I don't think there's many people like him bro this man he found the living descendants of our slave owners. Wow. The people that we got our last name from and he brought them to our fucking home, bro. When I was a little kid and I remember I couldn't really comprehend the weight of what was happening in front of me. But my grandfather was just one of them peculiar souls, man, that was down to take it there, to be like, I am so peaceful, I am so at peace, that I will take the descent. <laughs> Bro, I mean, like... That's crazy. I can't, I can't agree with it, but at the same time, like, what? Like, it takes a guy, you know what I mean? To show, like, the power of love, but, you know, it's it's strange. It's a weird line. I always think about my mom. I'm like, damn, Papa is crazy. <laughs> that, shit, that shit is crazy. 
Well, that's crazy, but it's like the way I'm talking about you, it, it's not surprising me that you got you come from that type of lineage of just like, you know, like you said, peculiar, you're just interesting people. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody is not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not at peace enough to have a dialogue with they slave masters, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, yeah. But that's the, crazy. The, the fact that they were like, they were like younger. They were damn near like 40s. You know what mm. I mean? Like, and it was just, you know, as I've grown older, I've seen, I seen how I'm like, wow, that's a, it's like, the, you ever seen that, that, that man who collects like clans, clansmen robes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then he like links up with the, with the like the, the young active niggas in Ferguson. He's like, nigga, what you collect the robes? Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting guy right there. I know exactly what you're talking about. Right, yeah, yeah. and that moment is like, I felt like myself colliding low-key i was like because that kind of reminds me of kind of the work my, my papa would do you know not like he wouldn't go that far out of his way but like he was that empathetic not you know sure. and to, in that man's defense that's bold mm -hmm. you changed a grand wizard's opinion on black people that's crazy like that's pretty crazy and I guess to kind of like stick on that, on like, you know, just this militant type stuff, uh, I've been having this conversation a lot in like my personal life with people, and I'm curious of your opinion on this, so I just want to throw this at you. So I've been talking a lot about, uh, you know, I want to see the best for black people, right? And I think that black people, just in general, this is a human thing, but just specifically talking about black people, uh, people need structure in life, right? So in the 60s, we had the Black Panthers or Martin Luther King or we had Dark, Dark, I mean we had uh, Malcolm X excuse me and you just had like leaders or whatnot there's no real leaders so I feel like a lot of young people need structure and they need discipline and militant mind to to be great right but I feel like it's so much easier not to have that that people don't worry about it and that goes right back to spirituality I feel like to be even in a religion or some type of spirituality you have to have some type of discipline uh, follow a guidelines, follow rules, and that's not easy because you have to be mature to do those things. And I feel like a lot of people, a lot of young people, they'll rather not believe in spirituality because it's like, yo, why do I have to worry about that when I could just live my life and not have any type of guidelines or strict things or whatnot? And I feel like as black people, for us to really come together and do great things, I feel like we need some type of uh, milit not even militant, but just like some type of like guideline or just some type of like uh, right. maturity where we could be all on the same page instead of everybody just doing their own thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm Absolutely. curious to how you feel about that. Absolutely. You know, but my, my, my thing is this, man. I'm always reminded about this. Shit. Spirituality is not like, you don't have to, religion is just a vehicle for spirituality. That's a fact. The beautiful thing of, about spirit and about being spiritual, quote unquote, the easiest thing anybody can do is just give thanks for, for life. That's okay. the first step. Just being like, I'm grateful. That's what can you do? You know what I mean? Yeah. You're literally hugging your spirit. You're like, give thanks for, for this. What what I have this present moment. You know, that's the greatest greatest prayer out of all of them. That's a fact. I mean, you you say that on uh, what is that? The last album. Uh, give thanks, and then that's when your mom kind of comes to talk about that whatnot. So I mean, that's a fact. That that's that a fact, man. You got to give praise and give thanks because I don't know, man. It's it's a it's an interesting world we live in for sure. And like I said, I feel like your music is helping people realize these things. Even the the bar about you know everybody don't got our uh, parents in their life. So if you got them, hug them, love them. You know what I'm saying? Give them a kiss or whatnot. Because I'm a mama's boy, and you talk about your mama a lot on the album. So and I, I relate to that. You know what I'm saying? So. And got, I'm listening to y'all, I'm like, let me go hug my mama, you know what I'm saying? Because you're right, a lot of people listening to this album don't got their mama, you know what I'm saying? And they wish they do, so. so I, like I said, I just, I appreciate, I can't express how much I appreciate you putting these, like, messages and just symbiotic things out into the atmosphere so people can digest them. I really can't appreciate that enough, bro. Like, I really do, bro. I appreciate y'all, man. Like, that's the, the realest shit, because... This is my first one, you know what I mean? Like, just officially, you know, whatever. And uh, I kind of just had to get out of my ways and realize that as much as this is my therapy, I mean, 
I would still be doing this and not releasing it or whatever. Mm. You know what I, mean? I have so much beautiful music that just won't see the light of day. You know what I mean? Just because whatever, maybe the content is too personal or, you know. Uh, but I realized that I can be of service, you know what I mean? For sure. And uh, that's something that was ingrained in me really early, especially, you know, we talking about uh, my grandfather so much. is like, especially being mixed race, you know what I mean? Like, I grew up in a black household, you know, and uh, with my grandparents lived, like, downstairs in, like, a different condo. We live in like a condo, so it's like, you know, upstairs, downstairs. Okay. So I saw my grandparents all the time. And uh, my aunt lived around the corner. My other cousins live around the corner. Like, that's just how it was in our little, in our neighborhood, you know. And uh, I'm trying to, I, I could talk about the shit forever, you know. You good, you good, you good, you good. You good, bro. You good. You good. And um, yeah, man. What I was saying about my grandfather is just that he made it very clear to me, like who I was. Yeah. That's to sum it up. And uh, he just let me know real early. You know what I mean? He was like, "You're black." You know what I mean? Mm. He was like, Dude. and another beautiful thing about it that I wish was kind of reinforced especially with children is like when they're taught about certain things like you can use one thing to literally you can walk them with that to the next door mm. or whatever you know what I mean and it's like the connection that my grandfather made he made it clear that both of my parents or that both of my my lineage is very strong and, and very diverse, but he made it clear to me that all of my blood was kind of like some revolutionary blood, you know what I mean? My, my, my father as well made it very clear to me, so I always thought that who I was was kind of threatening, especially like in the, the settings that I was, you know what I mean? Because not many people were coming with the same bag as me, you know mm. what I mean? We all come into life with baggage, so this shit is like, this shit is a breeze, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to sound too, uh, I don't want to romanticize about it too much, you know what I mean? But like, I really was like, early on, I knew that I had a, a duty. Mm. I knew that I had to like, I knew I had to press my blackness a bit harder than, than some other people because I was, you know, lighter or whatever. Yeah. But the beautiful part about it is that my grandfather put me on to to people that were mixed race, you know what I mean? Like, the first book that he gave me was Autobiography of Frederick Douglass. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, oh, this is crazy. You know what I mean? And that was an early relationship that I had with language and just, like, the way that he wrote was amazing. Um, but, yeah, he always was just, like, just example. What I mean by walking the kid, like, to the next door is like my grandpa was like this is Joe Lewis you know Joe Lewis the boxer yeah the boxer yeah, yeah for sure he used to call me Joe Lewis all the time because my hair like he used to slick it down to the <laughs> side make it like Joe Lewis and he'd be like this is my little Joe Lewis yeah. <laughs> and he would say he's like you know this guy was super fair skinned but when he was popping he meant so much to black people like they didn't really have that kind of you know social hero like that for you know sure. and uh the kids could really relate to or want to be you know what I mean? and uh he really made that clear to me man he was just like this is what i did this is what your what other people went through but you got to make sure that 
you gotta advocate for this shit. You know what I mean? I'm so glad that your grandfather put all that into you. Like I would look, I would high key watch like a documentary about your grandfather because like from the way you explain him, he just sounds like a very, you know, like a powerful guy. You know what I'm saying? Impacted you, and I'm pretty sure he impacted many other people that even before you was even thought of. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I, I think that's fire that uh, he even had that much impact on that many uh, people for sure. And um, I don't uh, I don't want to keep it for for too long. You know, so I don't want to talk your head off. But uh, before we get out of here, I have to talk about um, In Good Hands because that song is ridiculous and Cosverse is like super ridiculous. And I just need to know the 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 backstory on that song because I don't really see too many people with Ka features. You know what I'm saying? So I, I would love to just uh, end it off on, on Good Hands and how that even came about. I met Ka through uh, through Chede, hmm. through Earl, and um, he was actually his firehouse, where he was the, the captain of the firehouse was where I was staying at the time. If there was a fire in my building, he would have come to my house. Hmm. You know what I mean? And. Uh, we walked over there and I just we met him and he was just such a humble dude. You know what I mean? I was so like, I was just tripping, you know, because he was he's my favorite. and uh, he was just such a, a a nice guy. Yeah. You know, what I mean? like a genuine like, bro. Like the man has got like a a great smile. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like it's like that, and you're just like, yo, this is you're you're the man, and uh, so I would I would just go over there and see him, and we would talk and slowly build our relationship. And I just I was too scared to tell him that I made new music pretty much because I don't know I was just being like in my head about it, and um, I released a project with Black Noise uh, called Soul Golden, and we're actually about to drop the second really soon. Um, but Soul Golden came out and mad people was like just kind of tapping in and it just like yeah this is fine and he actually just like shouted me out and didn't know that it was me mm. and then I think Animos uh, or I don't know who it would have maybe Knowledge just told him like yeah that's, that's Sage man like, you didn't know that the baby boy was Sage He's like, wait, this this is the same kid that. And then he hit me up. He was like, what? Why didn't you tell me, man? <laughs> and I was like, ah, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> and he was like, yo, you're tripping, man. Like, you know, and then we just. He was actually, the one of the first people to kind of make it clear to me. He's like, yeah, I only do music with like people that, I, I can call a friend. You know what I mean? And that's. That really stuck with me because I'm like, you know, that's what that's. I, I want to build on the relationships that I have with with my friends that also make music. You know what I mean? So we can further under so I can further understand their music and just beyond this music shit, everybody happens to be like good people. You know what I mean? Most of them. You know what I mean? For sure. I have the slightest feeling that this shit gonna be a mess, nigga. It's about the interview. Yes. No, bro. This is, bro. Like, so this is what I want to do with my interviews. I don't like my interviews to be interviews. Like you said, you watched the Mavi interview. That felt like a conversation to me. It felt like just two niggas chopping up, kind of getting to know each other. And that's what I like. And I feel like that's what other people like. And you dropping the phone, smoking the blunt, laughing. You know, what I'm like niggas like it because it feel like you just watching two homies kicking it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like me asking like, oh, so question number fifty five is uh, you know, uh. <laughs> What what are you mixed with? You know what I'm saying? Instead of just shit like that. You uh, know what I'm what, saying? What are you mixed with? Oh, <laughs> you feel me? You know what I'm saying? It's, Bro, just, it's more normal. I remember one time somebody asked that to me and my sister, my big sister. And I think she said, we're Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman was like, white woman was just like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I could have sworn, bro, and I was like, Mavs, 
That's hilarious. That shit always makes me crack up. Because, nah. you know, niggas could kind of be any about anything. I so went fact. to Morocco. Everybody was speaking to me in Arabic. You could be Moroccan. You do You do look like a French Montana ass nigga. And French Montana is Moroccan. Bro, so. <laughs> yeah, so much. Like, people say I look like, like um, Mo Salah, who plays for uh, Liverpool. That's funny. I know who that is. <laughs> yeah, you could you could be a couple for for sure. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. But hey, man. Um, I I'm wanna... definitely. I'm gonna send you that joint. The uh, the uh, me and seafood joint. Oh, for sure, for sure. But before we end this, I just want to say thank you, uh, for everybody watching for you. Let me do this. My my whole thing was I wanted to interview all of y'all, and I've almost interviewed all of y'all. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate yeah. you definitely coming through. Um, my 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 dream is to definitely see you and Alchemist do something together because. I'm a huge Alchemist fan. Um, that's like a Alchemist is like a what do you call it? A bucket list interview for me. So if I could see you two do something together, that would be really ridiculous. So um, I need that. And um, also, every time I interview somebody within a Slums group, they always shout you out. They'd be like, "Yo, go support Navy Blue." And they they was the ones told me you got like shirts and stuff, right? Like you got like little shirts that you make and sell them, right? Oh yeah, I mean I've been I make the. I don't quite sell them just yet. I'm just getting shit right. Okay. Uh, I got the Freedom Man brand, you know. I, I've, I've been trying to tap in. I've been trying to support. I couldn't find nothing. So I, I definitely yeah. need to get one of them shirts. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. For, for sure. sure. For sure. For sure. We got the sweatsuits and all that coming soon. Oh, yeah. And, man, niggas got joints with Al. Al is like one of my favorite favorite producers. Yeah, that's a nigga I definitely got to interview before it's all said and done. That nigga, is, he's, he's insane. He's insane. That's like another that. person, you know, it's like the same thing. I was like, God, Alchemist, and you meet Al, and he is such a... That's what he seemed like. That's why, I like, that's a person yeah, that... he's just a... Regular dude. Yeah, and he's just super, like, I just like that he was super, like, let me play beats. You know, he's just not, not so judgmental, you know? I gotta tap in with but, that guy. But, uh, man. anything else you gotta say before we get out of here, man? Nah, not even. Is it, you said this shit is live? It's not live, but, I mean, it's, yeah. it's going on. It's happening. Yeah, it's happening. It's not like it's not like streaming anywhere right now. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Thank you. Shit. It was great. I I don't really like like to do this shit so much, you know. Well, I, I hope I made you feel comfortable in the interview, man. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. I just be high, especially this quarantine shit, man, inside and just. So I don't, you know, you know how I be. Wait, man. For everybody watching. Right now, I appreciate it. And I say what I mean, I mean what I say. Haters are going to hate, players are going to play. And you guys holler at your boy.